Hebrews chapter 1. Yes, sir. No, let me get into this. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so uh, it, it makes sense that uh, those who have his mark, uh, they don't receive it in their foreheads. Uh, it makes sense because that's where the Holy Spirit is housed. And, and, uh, but my question is, why also will some be uh, marked in their right hand? We're going to answer that at the end of this. He asked the question, will God have to say, uh, say that, and, and, and you know when we talked about this last week? Satan has always had a counterfeit to try to do what God is doing. Right. You remember us talking about that? Right. God put the seal of God in their forehead. Right. Satan is going to put the mark of the beast the same way. Everything has to deal with knowledge. But he also, also saw them up on their right hand. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about that. We'll talk about that in the end. Let's look at this thing in uh, Hebrews chapter 1. We're going to read one verse. And we looked at this last night. But I want to show you what the, who these spirits are, what they are, what their job is. Now, and, and mainly we're talking about the angels. Holy Spirit, Holy Angel, their ministry spirit, servant spirit. Uh, if you want to call them the Holy Ghost, that's up to you. We call them the Holy Spirit. But they're servant spirits, and they have a job to do. We looked at many different scriptures last night. So for those that weren't here last night, we're going to, you know, you're coming into the inner part of one lesson, but we're going to be over and over all the way to Pentecost, seven Sabbaths. So we're going to be into this with the Spirit of God. All right, let's deal with this. Uh, Hebrews 1 and 14, read that. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Now these are the angels he's talking about. For time's sake, we didn't get it. You go back to verse 7. But are they not all ministering or serving spirit mm -hmm. sent forth to minister to those who shall be or are the heir of salvation? Okay. They have a job to do. And this is why the angel of the Bible said in Psalm 8, one testified in a certain place about man. Said, God, what is it about man? This is what the angel asked God about you. That you are so mindful of him. That you visited him. Yes. You've given him authority and dominion over all things. And yet he don't even use it. My, my, my. He don't use it. That's why God looked at man and said, what is it about him that you're so mindful of him? Now, we're going to look at this thing. We talked about these angels, the angels of God, which are Holy Spirit. We talked about them on last night. We're going to read a few things just about the angels. I told you we would. I'm just going to read it. I'm not going to go into detail about it. We will talk about it again on our, on our Friday night. Let's start this in Ezekiel chapter 1. How many, how many went home and read last night? One, two, three. Miss Fanny Miss raised her hand halfway up and she took it back down. No, I started. You know. I started and went to sleep. The, the, word, the word put you right on the sleep there. Didn't do that. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Listen here. I told you that this is where we would start. And I just want to show you about these angels and then we're going to get into this thing. We talked about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Angels last night. But we didn't mention anything about the evil spirits. And I want to show you how serious this thing is. Now, as I told you, the most of the Holy the, the, the encounter that you said that you have with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit comes spoke or did whatever, all it is is just an angel of the Spirit of God that dwells within. Now, that determines on how much of His Word that you put within you. Mm -hmm. All of these things. Now, Ezekiel chapter 1, he's going to begin reading at verse 1. He's going to read verse 1. Ezekiel 1. Now, it came to pass in the, in the 13th year. In the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Chebar, that the heavens were open, and I saw visions of God. Now he saw the same thing that John saw in Revelation. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and God has shown him the thing that was supposed to be in the hereafter, in these latter days that we're living in. And you read a little bit louder and a little bit faster when you do it. Uh, so this is what he saw. Verse 4 says, and I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Three. Also, out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Out of the midst of it came the likeness of four living creatures. I told you how fire always dealt with, with the Spirit of God. Keep those things in mind, what we talked about on last night. Read that. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. They had the likeness of a man. And every one had four faces. And every one had four wings. Everyone had four faces and four wings. Verse 7 says. And their feet were straight feet. 
and the, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Now, read just, just, just the description of this. Yeah. If you saw it, Mr. Charles, I don't think of anything that you would just sit there being as calm and could sit around and talk and back and forth, commune with. I don't, I don't really think so. Yeah. Sit down to verse 10. As for the likeness of their faces, the four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side, and the four had the face of an ox on the left side. The four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. It's almost like these the uh, cherubim angels that's over the ark of the covenant right here. Two wings, they, they reached all the way out, and they just, just about touched one another. Now, I'm going to show you something about this. Flip the Ezekiel chapter 10. And this is just a tag off of last night. We're going to get into our lesson. This is just a tag from last night. I want, I want you to have this in your notes. About it. And we'll come back and talk in detail about it uh, when we get into the class of the lesson just di directly with the Holy Angels and the Holy Ghost in that form. Now, he's going to 10. Ezekiel 10 and he's going to read verse 20. Start in verse 20. Ezekiel 10 and 20. Read that. This is the living creature that I saw under the God of Israel by the river of Chebar. Now, I, now, this is what Ezekiel said he saw in chapter 1. What did you see, Ezekiel? And I knew that they were the cherubim. I knew that they were what? Cherubim. Yeah. These were cherubim angels that he saw that had the wing, that had the eye in front, back and forth. Now, Zechariah talked about they go straight, one way. They don't have to back up. They don't have to turn around and look and see what's behind them. And you know what they're doing? These are the eyes of the Lord. He said, they go to and fro over the whole world. You may hide from Brother Mark. Uh -huh. <laughs> they have taken record sakes. Hallelujah. Of everything. I don't care where you're at. That's what we talked about last night. When the plagues come in from Egypt. How can I don't care if they went into the lower cellars or the, the basement of the house. The plagues come down there and got them. Who released them? I'm going to show you that on today. You can't, you can't hide from the angels. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you. God said his eyes. And this is what God says about. God said, my eyes are in all places. Beholding the good and the evil. They're taking record. These guys got angels that the wings and their eyes in the back. They're taking record. And that's why I say, if I told you before, if you don't uh, walk this way of life that God has set for you, do it for nothing else. The Bible said all that make it in the first resurrection won't have to stand in judgment. The Bible said you're going to pass from death to life. Now, if I don't walk this walk for nothing else, and that ain't the only reason I'm in it, but that is the main thing I want to be in that first resurrection. There's some things once again, I said that I did, and you have too, it's yeah. hiding and kept, uh -huh. that could make if your record be real. Uh -huh. And it will be, unless you make it in this. May keep you out of, I'm not talking about heaven, uh -huh. but may keep you out of the kingdom of uh -huh. God. Uh -huh. We don't want that. Just in a let's, let's start this in Ephesians chapter 6. <coughs> now, once again, we talked about, as I said earlier, look at this. Spirit beings. We talk about the holy angels, which are holy spirit, or the holy angels, or holy spirit, the one that did not get kicked out with Satan. Uh -huh. So we have evil angels just as well. They are spirit beings. They cannot die. Spirit angels are spirit beings. They can't die. That's why God made a place for them when this thing is all over with. I'm going to show you in this lesson where they're roaming at right now, what they're doing. God made a place called the lake of fire. For them. Lord, Lord. The spirit being, they can't die. If, 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 they were called, if they were blind up, we do wrong, the way that they're saying for us yeah, is death. They did wrong, Elitate. They was kicked out of heaven yeah. and war broke out of there. And they was kicked out and they came down to, Peter said, they came down to hell. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what Peter said. Now, the play, the, the question with the accident in mind when we get over here, where is hell that if the angels came down to hell? Uh, let me let me show you. Just look around. Look around. <laughs> That's why the Bible said, "Hell enlarges itself daily." It don't have nothing to do about the dead. It talking about state and conditions, things that are going on in your life that have caused all of the problems. Who that can cause all of the problems in your life? Just think back. Look back. All right. 
Wait a minute. He has come down here in right here on the earth. Mm -hmm. And he, in, the Bible said, hell is enlarging itself daily. I'm going to show you that at the end of the day. A lot of times, saints, Ephesians 6, we won't, I'm going to try not to talk too much. We got a good little lesson here. A little bit long. So we pray that you all go with it. I guess you said, well, you've gone in and up a long time. Ephesians 6 and, and, and uh, 10. Read this. We're going to go right to the this scripture. These scriptures are well, well, well known. I want you to know yeah. that your battle that you're battling is not with flesh and blood. Me and Cedric stand up, son. These are flesh and blood bodies, a flesh and blood soul. Uh -huh. This is a soul that you can see. This is a soul that you can see. Mm -hmm. Though we wrestle, though we fight against her, yeah. mm -hmm. our wrestle and war is not against this flesh and blood. You better quit. I'm going to push you down. I'm bigger than you. It's not against flesh and blood. You got that? Yes, if anything can happen, it's going to go from right here yeah. and right here. Somebody's going to get in our mind. Yeah. And we got to take captive. Put your head up, son. <laughs> we got to take captive of these oh, thoughts who put these things in our mind. Because if we don't, you're going to think that flesh and blood is fighting against each other. Yeah. And it ain't, don't have nothing to do with flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Is the one that was going to and fro, seeking whom he may, and he got in our and messed it up. Nobody has ever committed any sin without the thought first entering into your mind. Not the blood pump, not the heart, but the mind behind the brain, the thinking capacity. That's why we talk about if the Holy Spirit is housed in the body, what part of the body do it the well? In the hand, feet, the whole body? Is, where did that say? In the mind, in the, mind, in the brain, the back behind the forehead. That's why God is going to seal you which in your forehead. Let's start with Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You see what we're standing against? The wiles of the devil. Why is this it? But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We, this, as we just told you in that expression, our war is not against flesh and blood. I don't care what you, how, and don't be foolish, but I don't care what you try to do against me, okay? Our war is not that way. Somebody is guiding somebody's mind. Read that. That's why Paul said, I know that me dwells no good oh, thing. Paul said, I, when I want to do good, yeah. I find myself doing where did that come from? From his mind. Who put that in his mind? Read. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Rulers of the darkness of this world. Who is that? Against spiritual wickedness. Spiritual and wickedness? In high places. In high places. I'm going to show you where that's at. Now, uh, skip down the verse for time's sake. Uh, this is the only way that you fight or get over this. Verse 17. You get that, You get all of that. You got the program that so you see all those scriptures go in. Verse 17 said the only way that you can overcome him. And take the helmet of salvation and the word and the sword of the spirit. What are they? Which is the word of God. The word of God is going to be the only thing that help you fight against the enemy in any form. How can you fight a spirit being that you can't see? All right, now. I told you that night, people used to say that all, Lord, me and the, me and the devil wrestled all night long. <laughs> Why you wrestling with somebody you can't see? That's ignorant. All right, help us, Lord. <laughs> You're no match. Rebuke him. Put him in the hands of God. And you try to get you some rest. You back and forth talking and communing with God. Like I told him that night, I, I, I'm going to put sickness on you. And then we, we, mm -hmm. we have to talk to him. What kind? You don't give me what my mama got? You don't do that. You don't talk with the enemy. You rebuke him. Come listen to the word. If you go on, you pray and ask God to help your mindset. Yeah. You yeah. don't go back and forth with somebody that you can't see, that you can't uh, do anything to. Mm. You don't even do it with people that are in the flesh and love. Let's look at this in Revelation chapter 3, 13. He's going to start reading in verse 4. And we're going to show you something about, uh, we talk once again. We're going to deal today, this is the opening of this whole series on spirits. Evil spirit, Holy Spirit, the good angel, the thoughts of the mind, what it is, what guides us, what, what, is it, what is it that we are filled with. 
All of these things. What deal with our conscience? All of these things. We need to know these things. So that we got a lot to deal with over the next. Uh, we got seven Sabbaths to count before we get to the 50th day. But when we get to Pentecost, we want to know it. Uh, uh, we want to know it. Revelation 13, they're going to start reading in verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon its horns ten crowns. All right, he saw this beast. Keep in mind, now, he, he, Satan is always trying to do something like it unto God. Read on. And upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. The beast was like a leopard? And his feet were as the feet of a bear. The feet of a bear. Now we read this stuff a little bit in, in Ezekiel a minute ago. And we read it last night in Zechariah. So I just want to show you. He's always trying to do something like it unto God. I'm going to show you that. Read. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power. Who gave him his power? The dragon. The dragon, and we're going to do it for time's sake. He just, that's just one of the titles of Satan. One of the titles of Satan. That old serpent, the dragon, the roaring lion, the adversary, the devil. That's just one of his titles. Read on. The dragon is the one that gave him his power. And his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. Yeah. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Now listen to this. This is the sad thing. How much of the world wondered after the beast? Oh. The whole world, all of the world wondered after the beast. Where did the beast get his knowledge and understanding and his power from? He got it from the dragon. That's why God told you, he said, I, I prayed. Paul said this in Corinthians. Mm -hmm. as, Eve by the, the, as Eve was deceived by the serpent. I pray that you're not deceived, even from simple things. Hallelujah. He called it the simplicity of quiet. Even the simple things, saints, we messed up on. Read verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. You see, what well, you know, like I say, he's always giving you account. He looked like a lamb. And read me, this is what we talked about last night. But he spoke at it. Cedric said, how can you tell the, do, the difference in between, between the two? God's spirit is going to always, God's angels is going to always, they're going to always line up with what's written in the word. Go back to Revelation 12 and, and, and start in verse 1. I'm going to show you this about the dragon and what happened to him. Revelation 12, we want to read that. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, mm -hmm. a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, twelve travailing and burden, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Another one in heaven, read. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns. The same one that he talked about has seven heads and ten horns. Now, all of this, this is great significant, and you have to get it at Daniel. We're not going to deal with that today. But all these other things are great significant. But read on, we've been in the book. And seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. How many did his tail drew? The third part. The stars are angels, saints. Mm -hmm. These were angels of God. Now, my question is what Sam asked me a year ago. Wonder what could Satan have told a third part of the angels to persuade them to go against God? Yeah. What, what do you think? That, what could he have told them? <laughs> he tried it with Christ. If you just worship me, I'll give you this back and forth. If you do this, I'll do this. They took him on a high hill and showed him all. I wonder what could he have told the angels to get them to turn their back on him. Yeah, my God. They, were, they, were, they, are, they at that time, they were in heaven. He's deceiving us. And he's doing the same thing today. His tail drew a third part of the stars, which our angels read on. And did pass them to the earth. And cast, they, what did he cast them to? Earth. To the earth. Keep that in mind. Peter going to say hell in a minute. Yeah. I'm going to show you that it's more than the same. Uh -huh. That's why it enlarged in itself daily. That's why you see people are being shot and killed. That's why you see all of the things that's going on here today. Uh -huh. Killing and stealing. Revelation said though, but Christ is going to get the keys back to them. Uh -huh. And it's in time. And the last enemy is going to be destroyed here. Won't be no more that. What verse are you? Four. Read it. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, 
and for to devour her child as it as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was called up unto God and to his throne. This, this was Christ, and he's going to do this. Let's look at this in, in uh, Revelation 20, uh, Ezekiel 28. Now, this is called the Prince of Tyre. Make sure you get this thing. This describes Satan to the T. It's going to say the Prince of Tyre, but this is who it's talking about. Now, I'm going to show you, and you're going to see all of his characteristics here. You're going to see everything that he is doing. Revelation 28 and verse 1. Now, you all have your, your uh, program, so you're going to have to go along with us. Uh, we're going to cover all this. Revelation 28, verse 1. Read verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Thus now, once Lord again, God. this prince of Tyre is describing Satan. You're going to see that in a minute. Read on. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. Because your heart is lifted up, and you said that I am a God. Well, Brother Martin, now you told me, I got you, I got you, I got you caught up. Uh -huh. Now, you told me. No, Brother Martin didn't tell you nothing. Mm -hmm. I read that to you. I read that to you in John chapter 10. Mm -hmm. That God has said that you are gods. Mm -hmm. And the scripture cannot be broken about that. And I am God. <laughs> I'm just like this. I'm just waiting to, for the like Paul said, I'm waiting for the adoption of this old body. Yeah. See, I'm made right now in his image yeah. and in his life. Yeah. But after a while, I say, with the adoption of the body, I'm going to be adopted. I'm going to be after his kind. Yeah. I'm going to be just like I him. Now he called me what I am. Yeah. Yeah. Now Satan had the same title as uh, 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 what the rest of him. He was a spirit being. He was not God, they were spirit beings. He called me God because I'm going to be, and you're going to be just like him. Now, in the evil angel, they don't have that capacity to be me, saints. Neither can do the ever to be you. They can't call themselves God. All they can do is make life or pretend and want to be. They had it, they were dying one time. And that's why he told them in that Hebrew 1, you go back and they're going to say, for, for unto which of the angels did I say, sit here until I make you my footstool? He didn't say that to them one day. See, this thing, like I said, is simple once we have been taught it. Read that verse again. Because you, because, they keep it on. That's right, get some batteries out of that green thing over there. And if you don't bring new batteries next time, the better they go ahead. The mm -hmm. read, read, read loud. Mm -hmm. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thy heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. Because you say that I am a God. I sit in the seat of God. And because you say I sit in the seat of God. In the midst of the sea, yet thou art a man. You are not a God, you are a. And not God. Yet you are a man and you are not God. Read on. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Though you even set your heart, he want to be just like him. I'm going to show you that in, Revel in Isaiah chapter 14. There's only one person that's just like that want to be like mm -hmm. Now he can't be. He don't have nothing waiting for him. And this is why he comes out here raising sand with you. Because the Bible said he know that he have but a short what time. time. Hallelujah. He don't have, he no time to get off. Especially in that man. Now the same though, the same though, the, the, the people in the church, they don't know too much of nothing. I say they're sad. They're not concerned about the mark of the beast. They're not concerned about the great tribulation that's going to have you. They're not concerned, don't know anything about any of those things. He know that he had but a short time. And he's going to, uh, the Bible said, hell is going to lie itself daily because he know he's going to mess up as much stuff as he can. Who released him to do it, Brother Mark? And if we went on the air, I would tell him who released him to do it. I'm going to see if they'll pick it up by scripture. Uh, yeah, look at it. What verse are you at? Skip down to verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him. I want you to say to the king of Tyrus, and I'm going to show you who he was. Now this was an angel. He's going to tell you who he was and how he was dressed and what he looked like and all those things. 
Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest of the song, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now listen who this guy was. He was the most beautiful angel that was ever created. You've heard that before, haven't you? Wow. He was the seal of perfection, the Bible called it. Yeah. Verse 13 says, where was he at? Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. He was in the garden of Eden, in the garden. Yeah. Now who can anybody name to me the people that was in the garden? Adam, Eve. Now, the Bible said that there were two other people in the garden. Who was it? The serpent that was known as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And there was one more person there. Or one more tree there. The tree of life would represent Christ. All they had to do was to eat of the tree of life and we could have still been living. Death would never launch a bone from the beginning. You got that? Yes, sir. Now he has been. Now he was. He was in the garden. He, he can't go back. You know what's over the garden now? To, to keep the weight of the tree of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, these guys right here with these things. They ain't go up there and go scare. They go scare the world out of here. Yeah. See how you do it? They scare the world out of here. Teach them good. They you, you can't do that. What verse are you? Thirteen. Mm -hmm. Three. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle. Now he was really pretty. Now there's some of that organization that don't deal with music because they know that. And I say this. Now a whole lot of this stuff that we have in the church, we need to, sometimes we need to just really check that uh -huh. and just see if this stuff is. Satan is a mastermind of music, of the pipes and of the organ. Like I said, that's why certain organizations don't want, I don't want no pipes and organs in my church. They know Satan is a mastermind behind that. And we're going to have to get off this thing, because I've been wanting to say what I want to say. Read on. The workmanship of thy talents. The workmanship of your piano, the key of boys and all that stuff, read on. And of thy pipes were prepared in the, in the day All that stuff was in the day he was created. He was over the choir in heaven, son. This man had a master job, my yes, quick. Master job. And he left it, and just for that's how he persuaded all the other one third of the rest of the doctors to follow him. He was beautiful. Uh -huh. Now, it didn't describe Satan like them other angels. Now, he didn't look like the chariot. Uh -huh. it, it didn't do that. The Bible said he was perfect in his beauty. Uh -huh. All them type of what's called, you look up at, uh, 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 who that old son? You know, y'all don't know Jim, real man. Oh. This, this shine, look at the shine and jeer and all those things. It, it catches your eye. In fact. And that stuff pers uh, persuade. Yeah, look at her knees. Shirt. Oh, and persuade. Now look at your shirt. Uh, shirt. Really? She's. She's so I know. Look back up here. I can't say what I want to say. Do like I want to say. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Verse 14 says, listen to this. Thou art the anointed cherub. That you covered. were that no anointed cherub. Not no more. Read on. And I have set thee so. Thou, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. You were in, in heaven. You were on the holy mountain of God. You're not there no more. What did he do? Thou was. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. You were walked up and down in the river 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways you from were, the day. You were perfect in your way from the day that I created you. And what happened to you? Till iniquity was found in thee. Until iniquity was found in thee. Read on. By the multitude of thy mer merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee. Now, by the multitude of thy merchandise, your trade and selling hot dogs and everything in the church, fish plates and everything you selling in the church. God said, My house is supposed to be called a house of prayer. Yeah, if the people are hungry in the church, give them some. If the government can give the people a similar package, yeah. Well, mess them up right here. Look like the church. If you've been paying tithe all of these years and you ain't had no coronavirus and no other uh, epidemic, nothing going on, look like the church is so something back into your life. Uh -huh. Just look like it. Look like it the top. They should take that, that uh, uh, what they call that money when they spend you that money from what, how you do it, what they call it, Keisha, fast money. Send them money. Let them take the fan money and send it back to the other people. Cash uh -huh. money, whatever they kind of call it. Cash app. They should take the cash app and cash app it back to the people. Uh -huh. They should do that. You ask them to ask in the church to cash out your tithes, cash app come back to the people. They all work. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look like 
Read that. And though, and thou has sinned. What verse are you? Uh, Sixteen. All right. By the multitude of thy merchandise, thou hast filled the midst of thee with violence. Trading and knowing all this stuff. That's what Satan will mastermind that. That's why they do all this stuff in the church. What what? And thou hast sinned. For that reason, you sin. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. And cast them out of heaven. That's the mountain of God. And I will destroy thee, O covering terror, from the midst of the sons of God. I will destroy fire. you. I'm going to take your position away from you. Let's look at this in, Reve in uh, Revelation chapter 12. It's like that. It was a bad place. A bad if you ever see Saul, the one that was the first king of Israel, ask him, that's a bad place to fall from. Why? To be up high in the anointing and have God's spirit and then have it rejected from you. And the Bible said God placed up on him. God placed. God did this. God did. A distressing and a troubling spirit from the Lord. Thank you, come God. Come on. Yeah. That's a bad place. Where did they come from? One of them evil spirits, one of them evil angels? Now, that's what they was talking about. And I don't like to get into this thing. You ever been rolled by, what you say, boy? How do you say that? I rode by whatever rode by it. No, that ain't nothing but an evil spirit. Call it like it is. Call it like it is. Where did he come from? The Lord, just like he did with Saul, placed him up on it. Why did he do it? He, the same way with Satan. Disobedience. You better walk this way right. That's what David, when David messed up, David said, uh, against you only, you only have I seen and done this wicked. And David asked God to do something. You go back and look at that Psalm 51. And God, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. If the Holy Spirit leave you, <laughs> any spirit may come upon you. What are we at? Revelation chapter 12, 12 verse 7. Read that. Now, he talk, God told him he was going to cast him out. Let's look at that. Revelation 12. Verse 7. And there was war in heaven. War in heaven? Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. Now remember, the dragon gave these other, so, uh, other organizations their power to, pre to do what they're doing. Now the dragon gave them that power. Mm -hmm. Now, Michael, Archangel God, Lucifer was one time more, but they fought against each other. Read. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. There was place found no more for him in heaven. So where did he go to? Mm -hmm. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. He was cast out to what? The earth. He was cast out to the earth. I wonder who else do we have in the earth? What verse are you at there? At the time. And the, his angels were cast out with him. And he had a, one third of those angels that were cast out to the earth. Let's look down to verse 12. Because there are other people in there who just wait. You got snakes, and you got all other animals. How do you think these animals, the animals were just as calm and nice? Do you think the bulldog would fight another dog when they went up on the ship on the thing with no one? Huh? Do you think the lion would try to attack the tiger when they went up there? God, he was going to repopulate he had to repopulate uh, the animal extinct. But do you think they were doing all that old crazy stuff? <laughs> It was Satan that got in them out of it and made them do that away. That's why when he come, he's gonna be in the he gonna he gonna bow them a thousand years in the bottom of the pit. That's gonna be a time of peace. God said at that time, little Cedric can play with the snake, the cobra, put his hand on it, and it will by no means hurt it. Mm -hmm. He's gonna get back to that and say to know that his time is short. <clears throat> That's the reason he got all this stuff going on. Now, let's look at this verse 12. It say, cast them out to the earth. Who want to say who else is in the earth? Verse 12 says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens. Now, hold right there for my question. Now, he told the heavens to rejoice. Well, he did. The other angels, y'all up here, you better do what you do. You better fall down, holler, holy, 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 and you better do everything. Just go on and rejoice. That's in heaven. Read on. Ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. All of the angels that dwell in heaven rejoice. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Now, he didn't tell the earth to rejoice, Mark. Told the earth to the, the angels and everybody else that's up there to rejoice. But in the earth, woe to you. Woe means judgment and damnation. Yes, sir. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Why, God? Remember where he said he cast Satan down to? Earth. Earth. Read that. Woe to the inhabitants. Start that at woe. 
Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you. The devil has come down to the earth. Having great wrath. Why is he so mad? He got great wrath. Why is he so mad? Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. I told you yeah. that. Oh. He, know, he know what time it oh, is. Yeah. Now we saw things like never before in this earth that have happened. Right. Mm -hmm. Now there have been some things that happened before, but it's been things that going on now that have happened. They're going to be that, and we haven't seen anything yet. There's going to be a time to come up on this earth called the Great Tribulation that's going to last for three and a half years. It's supposed to last for three and a half years. But because the Bible said, for the saints' sake, he's going to cut the time. Because if he didn't cut the time, no flesh would be saved. And this is what we ought to thank God for. At that time, we're trying to get to the place of safety. Hallelujah. Let's look at this in Peter. See what Peter had to say about it. And it amazes me that all of these guys said the same thing about it. Peter, let's look at Peter. Thank you, Father. Second Peter, we'll just read one verse. Second Peter chapter 2. And you just flip back and you write that close to it. Second Peter chapter 2, and he's going to read verse 4. Remember that he said he cast them down to the earth. Now let's see what Peter talked about. For if God spared not the angels if God that sinned, if God has spared the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell. Cast them down to where? Hell. He cast the angels down to hell. Now, Ezekiel and uh, uh, John in Revelation, and Isaiah said, he cast them to the earth. And watch that war to the heaven. Now, Peter said he cast them down to hell. Why did Peter use hell there? And I don't know if we have time to do it, but he said hell, that's why he said hell is enlarging itself daily. Yeah. State in condition. This man is, 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 is really got things going, saints. And we're not paying any attention to it. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't, I'm not against any of the preachers, but these political people, somebody's going to have to give an account for them making the people close to the church and all, all right. the other things. If you can't do anything, yeah, come together and pray. And I know what Brother Mark, we don't have we have more people than what you have. It don't make no difference if you didn't do nothing else, but in your car, come together on some way. Come together on your phone. Do something to pray and come together, son. Hallelujah. You got to do it. Thank you, Mother. Read. What verse are you? You finished reading that verse? No. Read it. Thank you. Who is he? Come down, 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 down the hill and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. What he got them kept for you, reserving them for what? Judgment. The day of judgment for them. He didn't, he, he didn't do it. Let's look at this. A lot of times we run around here bragging about this. And look at this in 10, Luke 10. Hey, uh, Cedric, I mean, uh, uh, Benjamin, what's that number on that thing? What number is on that? Um, the big number. Uh, All right. Uh, flip it over on cool and then point your numbers to get at least on 71 or 72. Are you all, any of y'all cool? Uh -huh. uh, well, just leave, put it on off. Put it on off, uh, 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 put it on off. All right. Let's look at it. Saint Luke chapter 10, and we're going to read verse 1. Let's look at this quickly. And in verse 1. After these things. The Lord, Luke 10 1. Read that. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself was. Now he had 70, he had 70 other helpers or disciples, if you want to say it that way. So you down to verse 17, and the Lord appointed them. Verse 17 say. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject now to they, us. Now here they are just rejoicing and happy and shouting, even the devils are subject to us in your name. Now he just told you in Revelation. You don't have no bragging right, no business to rejoice down there. You better be praying. Yeah. Yeah. Now he told the people in heaven to rejoice, but you better be. You better see, we got it all messed up. Ha uh ha, -huh. even the devil the subject to me in my name. They're going to do me like they did the seven songs of the city, right? Right. Right. Even the devil, we don't have those bragging rights. 
Not even over this epidemic that's going on now. We don't do that. We pray for all people. Thank God that he allowed us to be able to have service in the midst of this thing. Hallelujah. And then we pray for our brothers and sisters that they can get back in the church and to be taught and do different, do what's supposed to be done. And pray that everything that they do is in truth. I pray to God. That's right. Read the next, uh, excuse me, verse 17. Verse 17. All right, next verse, 18. And, that, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You got that, saints? He given us that, that power. Mm -hmm. Let's read verse 20. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not. Now, you, you don't have any business rejoicing in none of these things. Oh, if you're going to rejoice about anything, what is it? That the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. If you're going to rejoice about anything, let it be because your names are written within the kingdom, in heaven, in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go ahead and do this in Judges chapter 8. We're going to read quickly over this. A lot of reading. I'm going to let you go in a little bit. I'm going to let you go in a little bit, about 20 minutes. But Judges chapter 8. Okay. I want to show you this thing, and, and you even down there where I have extra scripture that on the bottom of your text, we probably won't get a chance to get into it. But please go back and look at that in 1 Kings 22. Okay. 400 false prophets. Oh, and then there was an angel at God. He said, Who's going to persuade them? He said, I'll go down and be a lying spirit yeah. in the mouth of all 400 of those. Oh. One angel went down and did that. Oh. <laughs> if, you only, if you understood these, these angels, and this is the thing, well, let's read this. Let me just be quiet. Uh, Judges chapter 8, verse 22, he's going to start. Judges 8 and 22. Read that. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son, son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you, that ye would give me every man the earrings right, of his prayer. That's good enough. Now, Gideon had a whole bunch of children, and we're not going to get all into that, but he did have about 70 children, boys. Yeah. I didn't say anything about the girl, but he had about 70 boys. Skip down to verse 22. This is Gideon. Gideon died. Now, still, 70 boys. Who, he, was, he was the ruler of the judge of Israel. Who going to take up and step in job? Who going to take over his church? I got 70 boys, so which boy get to church? Yeah. So to think about it. First, verse uh, 32. And Gideon had three score and ten sons of his body begotten, for he had many wives. We'll and, read on, don't worry about that. And his concubine that was in Shechem, she also bare him a son, uh -huh. whose name he called Abimelech. Uh-huh, Abimelech, read on. And Gideon, the son of Joash, died in a good old age, and he was buried in the sepulcher of he Joash. He died in a good old age. He had children when he died. Let's read this, chapter 9. Read, read, read this fast as you can. Chapter 9, verse 1. Now, keep in mind, Abimelech is one of uh, Gideon's son by a concubine. Keep that in mind. He has 70 children. Oh, I wish I could play with that. <laughs> but 70 children. 70 children. All right, keep that in mind. One Abimelech uh, by concubine. Read that. Verse, uh, Judges chapter 9, verse 1. And Abimelech, the son of Jeroboam, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and right. communed with them. All right, he went to Shechem, his mother's brother, and they talking with them, with all the rest of the family. Read on. And with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it's better for you, either that all the sons of Jeroboam which are as three score and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Is it rather for all seven of us to be the king, or is it just for one to rule over you? They, they plotting and doing some stuff that they really shouldn't be doing here. Read on. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. 
And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem all these words. And their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. He is our brother. And so all they thought, this is persuasion. You go back and read this in your own time. Look what they did in verse 4. This is what people do. I asked Corrine if she wanted me to get over $5 for praying for them. This is what people do when people want to persuade you to buy something from you. Verse 4 said, And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal Berith. We, we know that it wasn't right. That's a fall of God. So something ain't right about this now. Yeah. Read Wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. He hired worthless and reckless men to follow him. You know, if you're on the Lord's side and God doesn't call you, you ain't got to hire nobody. People just going to follow you. Amen, Bible study group of Israel? Amen. Verse 5. And he went unto his father's house at Ophir. Now, I wonder what he go to his father's house for. Keep in mind, my brother, he had 70 brothers. He went to his father's house at Ophir. And what did he do? And slew his brethren, yeah. the sons of Jeroboam. He killed 68 of his brothers. Mm. That's pretty rough. Mm. All for a position. Mm. Read. Being three score and ten persons upon one stone, notwithstanding, yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jeroboam, was left, for he hid himself. Jotham hid the elder, he hid himself. Mm -hmm. 68 people died that day. He had sick. Killed, Jotham got away. It was 69 and then him and him. 68 of his brothers he killed that day. Read the, the verse 6. And all the men of Shechem gathered together and all the house of Milo and went and made a king. They the went Lord. and made this man king. That's a bad thing to do, say. Verse 22. Mm. When Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel, then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech. <laughs> now, hold right there. Let me say this, saints. <laughs> you can do a lot of times. You can do do your dirt or do your mess. <laughs> the Bible said that those angels with those eyes all around, they go straight or forward. They take him record. <laughs> you may think you've been a guy by because it's been three years. That's why some of them say that they don't. That some of them don't fear God because they keep the judgment is not carried out speedily. <laughs> If you don't repent and get yourself right yeah. with God, it's coming. <laughs> you better be praying and ask God to forgive you and ask Him to help you and strengthen you, whatever it is. If you did wrong, even go back and get it right with people. Mm -hmm. What verse did you just read? 22. 23. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and Now, who sent an evil spirit? God. God sent an evil spirit. Like I said, the spirit beings are angels. As it relates to this, this is an evil angel. They can't do no more than what God ate or permit them to do. Even if it's through this fire, it don't make no difference. They can't do it no more than whatever he tells them to do. Read. And the men of Shechem dwelt, dealt treacherously with Abimelech, that the cruelty done to the threescore and ten sons of Jeroboam might come, and their blood be laid upon Abimelech, their brother, which slew them and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. And the men of Shechem said, liars, and wait for him in the top of the mountains. Now, you get this thing. This thing will turn around on you. The people that were with you to help you <laughs> kid your seventh brother, <laughs> sixth day brother, now they're going to turn on you. This is what had happened with them. Skip down to verse uh, 34. And a pillar <coughs> rose up, and all the people that were with him, by night, and they laid wait against Shechem and four companies. The people that were on your side, once again, God will turn this thing around. Yes, he will. Amen. Verse 45 says, And Abimelech fought against the city all that day, and he took the city, and slew the people that was therein, and beat down the city, and sold it with Saul. And when all the men of the tower of Shechem heard that, they entered into the hold of the now, house. Now he thought they had it made. He had killed all of those people that went against him. Oh, he still think he got in vain. Say, it ain't like that. I'm telling you. You still have a chance to repent. That's what God said in Revelation. Instead of the people repent, they're going to tell the trees and rocks are falling or hiding from the wrath of God. Let's get down to verse 49. I'm going to show you what happened to Oli Bimelech. Skip down to uh, skip down to, well, for time's sake. You know, he went on and did what he was doing. And verse, the people of Abimelech, verse 50. Then went Abimelech to Thebes and encamped against Thebes and took it. 
but there was a strong tower within the city. Now, get it now. He went on, don't take him another city. But there was a high mm -hmm. tower. Yeah. Some people call them watchtower, big, rock, tall wall. It was in the city. Now, there were people that were hid out in the city. It wasn't many about the tower. But read on, too. Who all were there? And then there fled all the men and all women. The, all the men and the women were up there. Read on. And all they of the city and shut it to them and got them up to the top of the tower. They went up on the top of the tower, men and women. Read it. And your women, I love this here. Yeah, read it. And Abimelech came up to the tower and fought against it and went hard unto the door. Abimelech came up there, he went to the door, and he just kicking going to tear the door down. Yes. Y'all women get this and go back and read it to other yes. folks. See, see, God had used us. And then go there and get the other one with Deborah and Balaam. See, God had used us. He will use you. Read that. Verse 53. Verse 53. Listen to this. And a certain woman, a certain cast, woman? cast a piece of a millstone upon Abimelech's head and all to break his skull. It crossed his skull. One woman, One woman. took yeah, a, yeah. A, 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 a big rock and threw <laughs> it down. And, now this man done killed a whole lot of other people. When God get done with you, when your iniquity is full, he will get you. All you do is repent. Yeah. That's what he said. He said an evil angel out and they, they destroyed these people. Let's look at this in Psalm 78. Uh -huh. Now, like I said, now a lot of people don't believe that God released Satan to do certain things. I'm going to read it to you in the Word. Satan is still a spirit, a ministry spirit. And he can't, to be honest with you, he can't do no more than what God let him. And I will say this, he can't do no more in your life and what you let, and the only way to do it because you don't have understanding, we're destroyed for the lack of. That's the only way you come into your life and do that. Yeah. You gonna think something negative, say something negative, or do something. Even the, and the worst part I see, I see people do it over their children. Mm -hmm. no, How would you speak negative over your children? Mm -hmm. It don't make no difference what they know. The Bible said they were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. In other words, some of the things they're doing because they come, they come down through your blood, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Right. They smoking weed because you smoke weed. Yeah. Well, I didn't try, but it don't make no difference. You did it. Yeah. Well, you ought to be trying to clean yourself up and, and do this. Get better so your children can get better. Personal. You're out there speaking things that gives them. You ought to be getting yourself together, getting yourself right. Like I said, the thing that destroyed us because we don't have no understanding of God's word. word. God in heaven know when we look around and the people ain't following it. Uh -uh. Now they said they ain't in the church. But we're not following. The people are not following the word of God. His word. word God. What verse are you? Psalm 78. He's going to read verse 40. Psalm 78 verse 40. How often they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert. Yea, they turned back and mm -hmm. tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Now, listen to what they did. Now, this was in the wilderness when they come out. And I'm going to show you what time he's talking about. They read on. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. They didn't remember how when God delivered them from Egypt? Read. How he had brought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoe. Now, listen. God did his signs in Egypt. Read on. And had... Turned the rivers into blood and their floods that they could not drink. That was God's sign when he turned the rivers into blood. What verse are you? 45. Read. He sent divers sorts of flies among them. Said fly, that was God's sign. I'm going to show you that. And I'm going to show you how he did it. Read on. Which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. He said frog. What did he do in verse 46? He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar. Gave they crop to the thing. And their labor unto the locusts. Locusts was all in the land. Verse 47 says. He destroyed their vines with hell. Hell come in. Verse 48 says. And he gave up their cattle also to the hell. Now I want to see how did God do all of these terrible things. With the fall. With the fly. With the hell. Now how did God do all these things? I'm going to show you how these things came. Verse 49 says. How did God do it? He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger. The, that, it was God's anger, the fierceness of his anger. What was it? Wrath, Wrath and indignation, indignation and, trouble. and trouble. Now, how did he do this? Read it. By sending evil angels among them. By sending what among them, Satan? Evil oh. angels. What kind of angels? Evil. evil. What kind of angels? Evil. Evil angels. Who sent them? God sent them. Now, Brother Mark, that ain't right. You take that over God. We look at this thing that's going on right now. 
The Bible, the Bible said, if that be calamity in a city, this is Amos 3, would it have not been the Lord this time? Yeah. Look at it in Isaiah 45. If there is the same thing. Glory. Brother Mark, are you saying that God did that? You read the scripture and you let it be what it be. You interpret everything else. I, I, I'm going to. Let's look at this in Job chapter 1. Now he said, God did it, did it by sending evil angels of destruction. Evil angels. Evil angels. That's why I said, we got to know these evil angels. It's enough we talk about the Holy Spirit. Now we're gonna, we won't deal with the evil angels no more too much. We got seven other, six other left, or seven, eight other left, depending on how many times we meet on Friday night to deal with this thing, the Holy Spirit, with the, with the, with the Holy Angel, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit. Well, yes, sir. Job 1. Job 1. He's going to read in verse 6. Now, keep in mind, God did by sending evil angels. Now, we looked at this a little earlier. Talked about this a little earlier. Read that. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Now, they, the sons of God are angels. These are the holy angels. They came to present themselves before God. And what happened? And Satan came also and among them. And here goes Satan with his, what's called, O Sloop, O Lucifer. He, slow, he showed up right around the angels of God. Read on. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Where you come from, Job? I mean, where you come from, Satan? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Now, it, it goes a lot deeper than that. Now, let's look at 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. I'm going to show you how Peter talked about this and how Peter described it. The angel of God showed up. And then an evil angel by the name of Satan, God called, showed up also. What in the world is he doing there? You know what Satan does, Satan? He's always going around trying to accuse the brother before God. Hallelujah. God, if you do this without a doctor, he'll curse you to his faith. If you take this from him, he'll curse you to your faith. If you do this, you let this happen to Satan, he'll curse you to your faith. He's always going about trying to accuse the brother. God let him show them and proved it with, with Job that and Job still held fast his integrity. First Peter chapter 1, chapter 5, thank you. He's going to read verse 6. Now, God asked Satan, where you come from? And where are you going? Or where, or where are you going? First Peter chapter 5, look at this in verse 6. Let's see what Peter said about it. First Peter 5 and verse 6. Read that. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. You better humble yourself so God can lift you up at the right time. And do what? That he may exalt you in due time. And what else are we supposed to do? Casting all your care upon him. Cast, care cast him. all your care upon him. Because God cares for you. Let him have everything that you got. Put everything in his hand. Why? For he careth for you. Be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil. The adversary, the who? The devil. Yeah. Now, your adversary, yeah. the devil, what did he do? As a roaring lion. A roaring lion? Walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. He's going back and forth, and he told Job, What are you doing? I'm seeking, I'm looking, whoever to get, whoever I can devour. Mm -hmm. He's still doing this. This thing is for real. This is why we started this thing in Ephesians and told you, this wrestle is not against flesh and blood. blood. This thing is for real. Yes, it is. First Samuel 16, we got like four or five little places in this short script, scripture we're gonna deal with. 16. Satan can't do anything Unless God released him to do it. Always remember that. When God got finished with uh, uh, Abimelech, he allowed a woman to drop his head, drop that stone down on his head. Yeah. Well, they have, and that thing was first king with all them prophets. Uh -huh. And even the prophet then, it was Michael and then the the Bible, the Bible said Jedediah slapped him, smoked him. Yeah. Uh -huh. He didn't get away with that. He, he wasn't getting away with that. He thought he did. Yeah. And the Bible said he went around in the war and did whatever he did. And the Bible said that, 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 that 
It was one person that shot an angel. The whole now you think about this. If, it, if there's a thousand people out there, they all fight in the battle. And he just shot an arrow up in the air. It just so happened the arrow come right down and hit that one individual. It wasn't nothing but an angel of God. Well, it wasn't nothing but an angel that God, whether it was the evil one or whichever one, he was working for God. Now, in that same passage, he said, I go down and I be a lying spirit in the mouth of all them. It may have been that same one. I don't know. There's so many of them. I don't know what it is. But you see how this thing works? What we say? First Samuel. First Samuel 16. 16. He's gonna read verse 1. Read that. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? How long are you gonna mourn for this guy? I rejected him. Skip down to the verse, I think verse verse uh, verse 10. And the Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send him, send and fetch him, for he will not sit down till he come hither. For he will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance. David was a pretty little boy. Y'all would have liked him. <laughs> made a good husband. Would have made a good husband for somebody. We did find that out. He had plenty of them then and plenty of wives. Abigail, uh, Nail, Michael, Michael Saul. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty man. Three on. And goodly to look to. Goodly to look upon. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon uh, David. You remember from we that just took oil. this. You remember when God said, When you want him to anoint him, take the oil, anoint him with oil, give him bread and wine. Y'all remember that about a month and a half ago? And when he did that, the Spirit of the Lord rested upon him. Mm -hmm. Read that. Verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. An evil spirit from who? From the Lord. The, the evil spirit can't do nothing, Abigail, unless God ate them. Now, an evil spirit from the Lord troubled Saul. Mm -hmm. That's something to think about. Isaiah chapter 14. Now I told you we were going to talk, we talked about the Prince of Tyre, and I told you we we're going to come back to this. I want to show you this, and we're getting ready to go there in just a little bit. All these next four or five little scriptures that have four or five verses in them. But I have 14. And I want to show you this thing about Satan. He was kicked out from heaven. Ella Duncan said he know like what he know what it's like up there. So he want to go back. Yeah. And then he just persuaded a whole lot of other people to put that in their mind to let them know, go to heaven, go to heaven, go to heaven, when God had promised you that. The Bible said that the meek are going to inherit the earth. earth. We got this thing backwards. John said he saw a new heaven and a new earth coming down out of the heaven, coming down to the earth. God said earth is my dwell Zion is my dwelling place. Right. This is my resting place. This is where I want to be. At. Where is Zion in the earth? Mm -hmm. He's trying to get out of here, and everybody else is trying to get up there. I don't know what for. <laughs> what we have said? Isaiah fourteen. Isaiah fourteen, verse twelve. Twelve. 12. Read it. Isaiah fourteen and twelve. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? But thou hast said in thine heart, I God said in thy heart, what did he say? I will ascend into heaven. Get this, circle all of those eyes. I got mine circled with a red thing. Circle all of those eyes. This is what Satan said. I will ascend into heaven. And that's what he said? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'm going to exalt my throne above the angels of God, the stars of God. I'm going to do that, read. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. I will sit on the mount of congregation. Skip down to 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. What's, what is the height above the clouds? That's heaven. the third heaven, son. Where God is. And what else he said? I will be like the most high. 
Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. He gonna be brought down to where? Hell. Ain't to that hell. the same thing Peter said he saw him cast down to hell? You see that? I know that Peter and them guys had the same thing going on. I don't want, I wonder, I, you know, I wonder how is it that the church can't get together? You got all these different organizations, I'm not going to call any names, but I wonder why they can't get together. Why they can't come to one common agreement? Mm. Every, this one believe this one, and this one believe this one, this one can't have you, this one have this right here, this one you got to say something, this one you got, you got so many. Why can't y'all come together? You read it out of the same book. I'm going to tell you where confusion comes from if you don't want to. No confusion comes from the dragon. Who is the dragon? The devil, the wrong yeah. man, the adversary. Yeah. He's the one that brings these things in. Now, it don't make sense. Everybody, everybody, you teach what I was in, in, in grade school. We had the same math book, and everybody come up with the same thing. Two plus two was always four. Now, how did that y'all mess this up? Every other books in school, everybody come up with the same thing. Mm -hmm. History books and come up with the same thing. English. A pronoun is still a pronoun. A verb is still a verb. A noun is a noun. How did it you mess the Bible up so like that? Cedric mm -hmm. said different teachers. Yeah. Ezekiel, we read it in Ezekiel because we don't, we were talking about to be aware of the method of the Pharisee. Uh, shepherds, you better get yourself together. That's what he said. Because God said he's tired of people scattered this sheep. He said he won't send out and get it on the sheep. Uh -huh. But I'm going to deal with the shepherds that scattered. You better get yep. yourself together. Yep. What verse are you in? Verse 15. Read that. That thou shalt be brought down to hell. You going to be brought down to hell? To the sides of the pit. Mm -hmm. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. And then, Fanny take on walk and they're going to look over in the pit. Yeah. What are they going to say? And consider these things. Hey. Is this the man that made the earth to Is temple? this the man that called all these things? Yeah. Is this the man that changed the. Uh, uh, mm. the, 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 he didn't really do it. But if this man that changed the people's mind had to go to church on Sunday and told them that any day is the Sabbath day. Wow. If this the man that had them keeping pagan holiday. If this the man, if this the man. Mm. Something to think about. Uh, excuse me. That did shake kingdoms that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. Go back to verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Hell is decided to meet you, Satan. What was Satan? Well, I mean, uh, uh, what was uh, Satan kicked down to? The earth. The earth. Peter called it hell. Verse nine again. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Mm -hmm. It stirred up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. Now listen here. It stirred up the dead, the chief ones of the earth. Listen, this ain't talking about no nobody physically dead. You know what this is talking about? Spiritually dead. The chief ones of the earth. Let me ask you this with this epidemic going on. How many of these times have you heard the chief people of the earth talk about prayer? Think about it. Even from the from the master, from the master talk, President Trump. How many times have you heard what they call a prayer, call a faith? The governor, the mayor, the, the city council, and all of these other people. Whatever they are, supervisor, whatever position they hold in high place. How many times? Even like I can say, if you don't want to, if you want them six feet apart, then you can call the prayer line. You can get them out there in the field and put them twenty feet apart and just do it, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When there was an epidemic, anything else going on with any prophet in the Bible, that's what they did. Immediately called a fast, called prayer, and the thing was happening in most cases. And this is why this one's still going on and every day we're reaching for how you live at the death thing. What verse are you at? Nine. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. Yes. Yes. Verse 
Go there. Second Thessalonians. We all know God. He said, I will ascend into heaven. I will be like the most high. I will do this. I will do this. Second Thessalonians. Let's see what Paul had to say about this. Come on, let's tell that one. We've got about five minutes. Wrap this one up. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word. Now, now hold right here. Paul said, I don't want you to be shaken in mind. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to be confused about this thing. Wow. Now he went on to tell you how, were you how you could be shaken and how you could be confused in this thing. Whether by spirit, by word, or let us skip down to verse 3. Let no man deceive you. Let who deceive you? No let man. Let no man. Now, for time's sake, well, we'll, we'll read it in a little bit. What I'm going to just tell you, Matthew 24, you already see it in your note. Christ said the same thing in the last day. Let no man deceive you. He said many going to come. They're not going to come in other people's name, but they're going to come in his name. And they're going to deceive many in these last days. Read that again. What verse are you at? Three. Three. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who is he? It ain't going to come. Early, the only way it's going to happen, it's going to come a falling away. Calling away from what? The truth. And then, at that time, the man of sin is going to be revealed. Who is him? We just talked about, I want to sin into God. I want to be like the Most High. I want to make my throne. Yeah. Read that in verse 4. Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. A daughter, a Paul, a Paul, a daughter himself above all that is called God. Or that is worshipped. He's worshipped by men. So that he as so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is so God. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself as God. And he's going to deceive a whole lot of them. Yeah. See, this is what this thing is talking about. There's another message that we talked during the Feast of Tabernacle, during the abomination of desolation, the other day. What time is that? They're going to go back over into the Jew and in the land over there, and they're going to build a temple. Then there's a guy going to sit on the temple and he's going to call himself God. They're going to be start back off the sacrifice and at that time, the sacrifice is going to be taken away. And at that time, when we see that, the saints, we're trying to get to the wilderness. As I said, you can have that dope. I got two of them up there. That triangle. If you want my Chevelle, now I'm crazy about my car. I like my Chevelle, even though I'm married. But whatever you want, you can have it up there. It don't make no difference. You go out there and get that money. I got dead dug up in the house. I got heat in the back of the ground out there. You can go dig it up and you can have all that. <laughs> no, you can't have none of my stuff. Now listen, I'm just going to get this real now. No, I'm going to keep all my stuff right now. I like my stuff, my old cars and all this stuff. I like it. Not now, but on that time, I recommend you join me. We'll try to get to the place of Satan. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, I have to pay Susan Brown. Read that, read that book. He said in short and tell, hey, God, do you remember what I said? Keep down to verse, uh, verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the work of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivable, deceivableness of the unrighteousness in them that perish. Now listen, Ruby, we talked about this again. Read that again. Now what's Satan going to do? Verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power with and signs sign, sign, and lying and wonders. Lying wonders. Mm -hmm. Read on. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Unrighteousness, and deception. Why? And them that perish. Why, why they did receive. they perish? Now listen. Why did they perish? Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. What is the truth, Senator? We looked at it in last night. They, re they didn't receive the truth. John 17, 17. Come on, what is it? Give that word it. is true. That word is true. Sanctify them by that truth, John 17, 17. Thy word is true. These people perish, they'll take because they wouldn't listen to Brother Mark when he was teaching the truth. True. Uh -huh. As simple as that. Thank you. What verse are you at? 10. Yeah. Okay, go on down. We're going to 12. 
And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Who that gonna send them a strong delusion? God. Who sent them evil angels in Psalm 78? God. Who allowed who who Satan to go up on Job? God. <laughs> for this cause. But well, Brother Hawk, I don't think it's fair. <laughs> you should have joined the Bible study group of Israel, all right, Jay? Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Let me quit. Thank you, God. I mean, you, you just, uh, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Read it. Hold up and read. You the one message. Read off. And for this cause, God shall send them strong God delusion. God wants to send a strong delusion? That they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. You see that? Like, that's pretty rough. Now, Paul said it about this way because people suppress the truth, knew the truth, and wouldn't teach it. You know what Paul said about it? For this reason, you have so many people in the gate. Men, preachers. Yeah. Going out there all the way, and women just as well. Going out to the same flat. Now that, that, that's wrong with I think chapter two or one or in there somewhere. Now over here, Paul is talking about about those sort of uh, strong delusion. There's only two things that you hear me teach. There's two or three things that happen to them. You're gonna be dead. You're gonna be gay. You're gonna die. That, that's scripture. Uh, and I, and and uh, uh, what's the You know. <laughs> And we pray for our people. Yes, Lord. God in heaven know we pray for our brothers and sisters. We are just like what God said and what Peter said. We don't want any of our brothers and sisters to perish. We don't. We don't. You know, just like Paul said in Romans 10, Brother, my heart desire and prayer to God for my brother and sister here that they might be saved. Same. I've looked at these people. I've been to the church and I've taught the singing program. I've been with it. They have a zeal for God, but they're not according to God. They've been ignorant of God's righteousness. The law of God. And seeking about the, you know, in the back you go in the church and the church rule, the book, church book is bigger than the Bible. Huh? Seeking about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. You don't have to do that. Follow the law of God and you all, everybody know. Every member of the Bible study group of every, you know what you got to do. Hallelujah. Not supposed to, but what you got to do if you want to be a part of this organization. You got to follow the laws of God. Hallelujah. And that way I don't have to come out and make up a whole lot of people and then when this family here gets something going on or this one got a gay in the family member, well see Brother Mark, this is my son and we got to love him and you got uh, hell, is, hell is finna enlarge itself. Now you listen to this. Hell, no, I don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not going to count that. That's hell that started this. Yes, I'm going to count that. See, I'm going to count that. Yeah, that's all. Let's go. Let's go. Lord, help me. Second question. Yeah. No, no, you didn't finna read that. Did you read that? Okay, good. Second question. We all want God's Hallelujah. I think we just do one scripture after this and be done. You got the rest of them. We over one time. Before we be done at 115 or 3 Now listen, I will say this. Now we celebrate the Sabbath day. Uh, and I'm just doing this for time thing because of this, this TV thing. Yeah. We celebrate the Sabbath. The Sabbath is from sunset to sunset. That's when we leave, I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. We sit around, me and these brothers still sit around and talk about the word. Hallelujah. Sabbath still. I'm just going into the. Better not nobody raise their hand and say, I'm thirsty. Better not nobody remember the Bible and say, I'm hungry. I don't want to hear you. Let's go. Come on, man. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Say Corinthians chapter 11. Chapter yes. Corinthians 11, he said. Verse 2. Verse 2. For I am jealous over you with a godly je jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as the chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Not that I'm married to you. Yeah. I'm sure it was Sister Jefferson. Mm -hmm. But I deceived, just like Satan deceived Eve. With simple things, read that. For if he that cometh preaches un preaches another Jesus, whom he, we have not preached, or if you receive another Let's spirit. Let's skip down to verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel. For ain't no one, and look, ain't no one 
knowing that the preacher can do it. Look what Satan did. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He's transformed and changed himself into an angel of light. So it ain't, it ain't no wonder the big guy do it. Read on. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also. If it's no great thing, and who ministers? His ministers. His ministers. His ministers. That's why I think the third quote said what he said. Read. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, who is whose end shall be according to their work. Timothy said in our last scripture, Timothy said in chapter 4, 1 Timothy 4, just flip back a little bit. See, this is why we have this thing going on in these last days. This is why this is going on. And to those that are that are watching us, we thank God for you. We appreciate you. Uh, we pray that I pray to God that it's been a blessing <laughs> to you. Uh, you're always welcome. To we have a message wrote out. You're welcome to have a message, show the message. Most messages, show them the message, show them the I get it. If y'all don't much better than people where I'm at, what y'all doing? I'm in first thing. So, <laughs> he got it. All right. We have a printed message for you. All of mine pretty much are. I want you to be able to go along with it and know what I'm teaching that everybody talking about. What about. We do appreciate it. Just our last scripture. First Timothy chapter 4 would be that second. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times shall some, the, some shall depart from the faith. I went over this earlier in the week. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. You got that? Mm -hmm. He didn't call her no Holy Ghost or angel. He didn't call her. He said the Spirit speaketh expressly. Some people are going to depart from this thing. In the latter days, it said. Verse 2 said, what are they going to do? Well, finish reading the end of verse 1. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy. See, that's why Paul told you, you better take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, so you know how you could, what the baby is saying, on. Read. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Their conscience is seared with a hot iron? What do you mean by that, Brother Mark? Forbidden to marry. Forbidden to marry. I don't need no wife. I don't need no husband. I'm not. There's some people that have been married, and you up in age, and you might need you what's what called to say some of them husband passed away. You might not have that desire. That's fine. But you're not gonna come tell me that as a wife don't need a wife. Amen. You're not gonna tell me that. Now I know God's word is true. Yeah. That's right. The word is true, sir. Women, they need a home. Yeah. Now, when you join there are certain organizations that teach that if you be this, you got to remain celibate all your life. But the Bible didn't say that. The Bible even said that we look at different. The Bible said that the young man shouldn't even go to war. Uh -huh. Don't go to war. <laughs> you ain't able to contain yourself. I bring up my young go a minute ago. You're not able to keep yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go. You know, you mess up when you stop. <laughs> for men, and to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. If you know the truth now, now skip down to verse 13. Till I come. Now this is, this is for you. Till he come. Give attendance to reading. Give attendance to reading. To exhortation. Exhortation. To doctrine. To doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Do not neglect the gift of the spirit that's within you. Read which was given thee by prophecy with, with the line laying on the hands of the presbytery. Read. Meditate upon these things. Meditate on them. Give thyself wholly to them. Give yourself entirely to the word of God. That thy profiting may appear to all. Your progress is going to be evidence to all people. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt save both thyself and them that hear thee. You will save yourself and you'll save them that hear you. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you what verse 6 calls you. If you do these things, now that's the choice of chance, Senator. If you teach from the Bible, look what he said. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourishing up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. It will, you will be a good minister if you do these things. 
Come on, give God a shout of hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. For you, let me just speak and declare some things into your life. Do it alive. Do it again. Every day. Then nobody else want to do it. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we speak our blessings on the line. We have God for you. God is either leader, God. Protect us. Show us your way. Show us your salvation. Day by day. Of your word, God. Uh, it's not a mystery. We thank you that you reveal it to us, that we have understanding of all that you are doing. We thank God for all that have been listening, listening in with us. We speak God blessing over you, a uh, lot over your life for all uh, for all that you're doing. God bless you. We love you. God bless you. Shalom to you. All right. Let me give you this one last scripture, you saints. Thought you said that was the last scripture for them, but not for you. You wrote your out again. I saw you. 